Nestled in between a variety store and a beauty salon along a quiet street in Brighton sits the manifestation of the dreams of Ilona and Irina Znaharchik. In January of 2022, I had three dreams that were very, like, just miraculously reflective of my situation and I understood from those that I had to go into entrepreneurship and I don't regret it. <laughs> I was kind of burnt out at work and I started thinking about switching jobs and I had a dream in which I saw the circumstance under I would leave my job and the new location I would end up with in. Like I saw the street, I saw the buildings, I saw the trees. When we came here, we sat on the bench right across the street and I looked at this building and it was just kind of like a flashback to the dream. I was like, this is it, Ilona. Born six years apart, the sisters immigrated to the U.S. from Ukraine with their family when they were young. In 2018, they returned to their native country, a trip that changed the trajectory of their lives. When we went back to visit our grandparents in Ukraine, that's kind of where the idea for Soltko was born. Soltko is the Ukrainian word for sweet. That was the summer before my sophomore year at BC, uh, and I just fell in love with the Ukrainian pastry scene, came back uh, to Boston, and I started making macarons for my roommates and my professors, and from there it just spiraled into <laughs> something where it was too late to go back. <laughs> at first, they only baked on the weekends, but that part-time passion eventually grew into a full-time trade, prompting both math majors to leave their jobs in finance. I went 180 and went from corporate into entrepreneurship. I just really wanted to kind of wake up knowing that I'm doing what I love. In 2022, they opened Soldco Boston, selling beautiful custom cakes, homemade pastries, and traditional Ukrainian delicacies. So we have a breakfast item. It's a very traditional Ukrainian breakfast. It's a farmer's cheese pancake. Sirniki is lightly toasted in butter, then baked and served with fruit, drizzled with honey and sprinkled with powdered sugar. The honey cake is our best seller to traditional Ukrainian cake. There are seven layers of the honey shortbread with custard cream in between. No other culture has a similar cake, so it really stood out when we first opened. Their macarons have unique flavors like passion fruit, cappuccino, and even blue cheese and pear. People either love it or hate it, but the ones who love it are just obsessed with it. Their menu and their mission to live their dreams is a pairing Irina and Ilona have created with purpose. A lot of small businesses, when they open a very busy location, they boom and they cannot keep with demand. What's been nice is I think we kind of eased into business. The locals found us, now the greater community is discovering us, so we're grateful for that. In the ever-evolving city of Lowell, there's a stronghold that hasn't moved from this spot since 1971. We used to be open from 4 a.m. to 2 a.m. If mills were down there, we used to get all the mill people and the shifts changed. The biggest seller was not coffee or hot dogs, the biggest seller was cigarettes back then in 1966. Walter Garside is the owner of Elliott's Hot Dogs. We do hot dogs three ways, we deep fry them, we grill them, and we steam them. He started working here when he was just 15 years old, after his dad bought the restaurant. Oh yeah, it was more than a party crowd. <laughs> it was not uncommon to have to take somebody by the ankles and drag them out the door, but that was back then. Things have changed a lot. The first version of Elliott's opened in 1920 and operated out of a train car stationed next door before Walter's dad moved it to its current location. The place is very nostalgic. Everybody has memories. We've had wedding receptions here. Jason Antifonario was a kid when he first started coming here with his grandfather. Brings back memories and still here and still good food. It's my go-to, I don't know. It just hits the spot. For lunch, a six-pack all around. That's mustard, relish, onion, plus ketchup for Jason, who also brought a first-timer, his friend Tom. Everything that I had imagined, envisioned it being, it is. It's kind of a landmark around here. It's not unusual for me to be driving down the street and somebody roll the window down and say, two at the works. Not just a restaurant, Elliot's is a tradition, one that will live on after Walter retires soon, thanks to his grandson, Tyler. I'm happy that it'll survive another generation. A little young girl, she's sitting there having a hot dog, she's crying, and I come out, and I said, what's the matter, what's the matter? My dad used to take me here and he passed away, this is my closure. I had all I could do not to cry myself. You, you don't realize the amount of lives that you touch. 
And the hot dogs have played a big role in Walter's life, including how he met his <laughs> wife. There was actually another hot dog stand next to Elliot's. Walter and his brother bought it. That owner is now Walter's father-in-law. Father -in and all comes together. Back to Soul Co. Among the many different, you know, dreams and signs mm. that they were supposed to be in Brighton, the shop they took over was already painted bright blue and yellow. The colors, of course, of the Ukrainian flag. All right, still ahead, a throwback to Prohibition.